Mars. Well, check that out. What? Zoom Mars. I don't know if I can zoom in any closer without. Screwing up the focus. We got it focused in on it. I'm try to zoom in more. It's full zoom. Full zoom on Mars, baby. That is something. Wow. Shit. Look at that. That's freaking awesome. Freaking jets flying over. Lose its focus.
And there's mosquitoes out here tonight. I wonder if I can't get a good video on Saturn. do 10 or 15 minutes on Mars here and then I try to get Saturn for you Alright guys, I got it on user setting. I got the ISO turned up, I think it's 6400 all the way. I got my light exposure turned down to minus 2. And just before I started the video, what I did was I pushed down on my um, camera button like I was going to take a picture. I let it focus in on it and then I started it up on record <laughs> hey boo boo what you barking at my protector dog <coughs> I got a sty in my eye. I got allergies kicking my ass. Oh, and I didn't. I thought it was going to be real cloudy out because we got a lot of rain here in Florida today. Well, it's been cloudy all day. And just before I started this video, I took some pictures of some chem clouds. Kim Trails. I start calling them Kim Clouds. Wow, just a little movement. Look where I go.
Now I'm going to try this same method that I used on this for uh, Antares and uh, Saturn and any other star I can get in here tonight. Before the clouds come in again, there's a bunch of thin uh, upper clouds. Kind of creamy shit in the sky that seems to be up there all the time anymore. Sorry about that. Sometimes people don't want to tell people how they're doing their videos, but anybody with a Nikon Coolpix P900 can try my little methods here and see if they get the same results. Dielectric energy, baby. Dielectric energy. Vibration, frequency. Each star has its own frequency, its own vibration. They're all dielectric energy. Good question. Are we dielectric energy? Hmm. That is a good question, ain't it? I'm going to do this for 15 minutes. I'm just going to do it for 10, but I'm just going to put the timer on here. and I'm almost 15 minutes into it, so I might as well do it for the whole 15 minutes. Show you stuff. Thought I'd try a new method. And I see it works very fine. cloud or something going in front of it.
This is a star next to Mars, just a little above it. It's one of the three stars in between uh, Mars and uh, Saturn and Antares. There's Mars. Let's see if I can get Saturn here. Alright, see what happens to it when you got the ISO set way up? It's like a big blurry blob, Saturn is. I'm going to turn down my ISO. Still, the ISO is too high in it. Let's lower that ISO. I can't really see what I'm getting here. I got a sty in my damn eye and I'm making my eye all blurry. mowing a dusty lawn. If I stand back I can see it.
I am going to lower down the ISO again. better with the ISO turned up on the user setting. We'll go to the moon mode. Hang on people. She is. I put it on the moon mode, but I made sure my ISO was on uh, on the camera setting or on the aperture. I put my ISO down to a hundred. Um, picture control on neutral the NL. And I went ahead and turned my image up, everything all the way up as high as it would go. Image, saturation, and uh, contrast. But then I made sure my light exposure was down to minus two before I turned the camera on and started recording again. And this is at full zoom, I can't get no more zoom out of it. But you can imagine if I had a big old telescope, I, I could probably get a little better image of it, probably. I'm not saying I'd uh, get a huge difference. I'd just be getting closer to it. But I think this is exactly what the telescopes see the big telescopes and if you listen to most of these people that you know do videos of the planets one of the things they do is put put it in Photoshop they also do overlays upon overlays upon overlays to get more I guess detail in it but that's really manipulating the video. This is Saturn just as it's coming into my camera right now. No manipulation, no doodle doodle, no pooping on the video. A live observation. What I see is what you see. Hell, I don't even know how to Photoshop. If I had it, I wouldn't use it anyhow. I'm, I'm computer illiterate in a way. There's only certain things I can do on a computer. There it comes. We'll let it slide right on across the screen. I 
I could use the zoom tool on this that I do have in my conversion but um, again I like to let you see it just as I'm seeing it <clears throat> I'll try to get in Tearies after this Okay, people make claims that Star Trail videos are fake. They're not really faked, but they are manipulated. In other words, somebody says, how do, you, how do they get it to do a full circle? Well, again, if you go in and you watch some of these tutorials on how they do their Star Trail videos, is that they're not just uh, months and weeks but some of them do years of video or star trails and then they stitch their star trails together in other words a bunch of overlaying photoshopping uh, just to get everything lined up but you know they're not really fake in a sense so what they want to do is show that you know these stars do circles above us um, so I wouldn't go and just say they're flat out completely fake. I would go out and say that they have been manipulated to form the star trail to do all the whole full circle. In other words, if you started out in January videotaping the sky, uh, by next January all the stars and planets and all should have done a full rotation because we see the same stuff year after year doing the same thing pretty much in the same places they've been recorded the constellations always seem to stay the same oh but they say Polaris changes hmm does Polaris change or do they just change the name of Polaris? Well, one day they'll say, oh, that's, that's a dog star. Or, that's a red dwarf giant. That's the new pole star. It could be the same star. Well, they keep bullshitting us with these distances that they are. Now what I see in the sky is there's a little bright light out there. And sometimes I see a bright light out on the water. That's a boat with a light on. And I try to zoom out there to it. And uh, 
Oh, that little light out there on the shore, you know, 10, 15 miles away, who knows how far it is at night. Uh, don't look much bigger than this light, or much smaller. Well, look about the same. So how far away is Saturn really? 746 million miles away? Go well, outside and look up in the sky and look at it. Look at that little dot up there, that little pin dot of light. And you wonder how in the world am I zooming in on it and getting this. Okay? It doesn't make sense. Yes, I have a lot of atmosphere between me and a light on the water. But again, how far away am I zooming to that light out on the water? I, mean, I do have a video where I'm following a shrimp boat with its lights on and you can actually see the reflection of the light in the water and I'll get this I don't know why this thing's being touchy tonight but you see the reflection of the boat's light in the water and the further the boat gets away it blends into its own reflection and then it goes to the vanishing point. Hey, where have I seen that before? Ah, oh, the sun. The sun does the same thing. It blends into its own reflection as it's just getting farther and farther away. And then it goes to the vanishing point. The same way as the light on a boat going out in the water. I got a little, a couple other little clips of this on the user, so I'm going to go ahead and shut her off and uh, try to catch Antares. There's Antares.
I'm going to try user setting on this one too. I'm going to let it go one time more across the screen and then I'm going to go to my user setting. See if I can't get a little better zoom on this bad boy. Antares. Yes, this is Antares. That is at full zoom. At full zoom. Again, I didn't zoom in all the way to it. I zoomed in partially to it, focused it with my camera. Picture button. Once I got into focus, I hit record and started recording it. And then zoomed in all the way. What does it look like? A ring magnet. Dielectric. Wow. Man, I got this thing on slow already. There it comes. There we go.
can't believe this. Big old long streaks above my head again from these chemtrails. I think the camera lens is getting some fog on it. That didn't mess it up. Been real humid here in Florida. I don't know why this one seems to move slower than Saturn. <laughs> it seems to, maybe it doesn't. Let's just let it come into the picture. Okay, I'm going to put some pictures at the end of this video. Um, these are some pictures I took before I started uh, filming. Um, some pretty interesting ones. Um, uh, take a look at them. I mean, they're not great, but it's something to check out. Um, I'm also going to repost this and uh, and reload it uh, into YouTube. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my contrast, my saturation, and brightness on it. Um, so I'm going to manipulate it a little bit. But I thought it was very interesting as I'm converting it. I, I, I played with them and, you know, seen some interesting things that happened to these stars. Or these wandering planets, so uh, whatever you want to call them, wandering stars, planets. One more time across the screen, people. So, um, take a look at it. At, like I said, I'm gonna reload it up again and change uh, change that in the in the settings, and uh, let you see it both ways. Um, I think you'll enjoy it, and I think you'll think it's very interesting. Okay, uh, continue watching. And have a good day. I shouldn't even have my camera out here in this crappy weather. <clears throat> it is real moist out here. You can feel it. Here it comes. Okay, last time.
I'm going to get my camera out of this. Just too dewy out here. Yeah, my camera's actually wet. I need to take it and dry it off before I close it up. Okay. Okay. 